In section 4.6, we're going to use congruent triangles to prove other things. To do that, we need to use corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. The acronym for this is CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC says this. After we have proved two triangles congruent to each other, then all the remaining angles and sides of those two triangles are also congruent. CPCTC allows us to use congruent triangles to prove other things. Let's look at an example where we have to use CPCTC. In this problem, we're given A is the midpoint of MT and A is the midpoint of SR. And we need to prove that MS is parallel to RT. Well, if we think backwards through this proof, if we want to prove this, we need to have angles that are congruent. In order to prove lines parallel, we need congruent angles. In this case, if we can prove angle M congruent to angle T, then we can conclude this. So in our proof, we want to show that angle M is congruent to angle T. Similarly, we could have also said angle S and angle R. S and R are also alternate interior angles, and if they're congruent, then our lines are parallel. So we want to actually prove this to prove this, or prove this to prove this. Well, to get this, let's look at M and T, or S and R. Both of those angles are parts of two different triangles. And if we can get those triangles congruent to each other, we can conclude this. So really, we want to prove that triangle MAS is congruent to triangle TAR. So if we can get that, then we can conclude by CPCTC one of these two things. Well, in order to get these triangles congruent to each other, we know that A is the midpoint of MT, which gives us two congruent segments, and A is the midpoint of SR, which gives us two congruent segments. So because this is true, we know MA will be congruent to AT. Because this is true, we know that SA is congruent to AR. And we have S and S to prove these triangles congruent. So we need one more piece of information. Well, if you look at the way these triangles are drawn, we also have angle MAS congruent to angle TAR because they're vertical angles. So if we have these three pieces of information, we can prove by S, A, S that my triangles are congruent. So there's my flow. There's the flow of my proof. I just need to write it into a two-column proof. Let's start with our first given. A is the midpoint of segment MT. If we know that A is the midpoint, we can conclude that MA is congruent to AT by the definition of midpoint. That gives me my first pair of congruent sides. And I want to use SAS. So I'm going to hop to my angles being congruent. Angle MAS is congruent to angle TAR by the vertical angles 
theorem. Now I need my third piece, another pair of congruent sides. So I'm going to go to my second given. A is the midpoint of SR. Well, if A is the midpoint of SR, I can conclude that SA is congruent to AR by the definition of midpoint. Now that gives me enough information to conclude that my triangles are congruent. Triangle MAS is congruent to triangle TAR by side angle side. Now once my triangles are congruent, all of the remaining parts will also be congruent. So after step six, I've proved these two triangles congruent to each other. So I also know that this side is congruent to this side, and this angle will be congruent to this angle, and this angle will be congruent to this angle. So I need to pick out the information that I need to conclude that my lines are parallel. I can pick either M and T or angles R and S. I'm just going to pick angles M and T just for an example. So because my triangles are congruent, I can conclude that angle M is congruent to angle T by CPCTC. Now if you notice, we got M and T to be congruent to each other, not because of their alternate interior angles, but because they're corresponding angles in congruent triangles. And since they also happen to be alternate interior angles, I can conclude that my lines are parallel. Angles proving my lines parallel will be the alternate interior angles converse.